Brighton telling us no uncertain terms no bid will take Moises Casado away from the football club in this transfer window. It is a strong stance. It's a very strong message that they are sending out. And many Brighton fans getting in touch to say, yeah, we back it, giving us their opinion this morning. The weekend, uh, of course, saw them put Liverpool out of the FA Cup. So they're flying right now. Josh is a big Brighton fan. Josh, good morning. What do you think your club's stance on Casado? Hi, Jim. Um, I think it's absolutely brilliant, mate. I think we're we're taking a stand against the top six, and I appreciate talking to you, Simon and Stuart, people that know football. And I think don't play don't play hardball with Tony Bloom. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You you, you admire the way Bloom and Paul Barber go about their business at your club. A hundred and ten percent, mate. And one thing I look at: lots of people say, "Oh, you're just going to turn into a selling club like Southampton." when they were sort of 2014 Poch era, what I'm saying is, you know, Southampton were brilliant then, but the setup we've got now and the infrastructure we have is to stand out against these bids from the big teams when they want our good players at a time in the transfer window when we've got, what, 30 hours left, something like that. You can't replace a player like Potato when we're pushing for Europe. It's ridiculous. Josh, good to, good to hear. Isn't that good to hear from your own fans, Stuart? If you're at the top of the house at Brighton, you're getting a thumbs up this morning. Yeah, uh, I think from the outside, Brighton look like a team that have got everything in place, both off the pitch, from the terraces and on the pitch especially, you know, and it's it's a blueprint to a very mm. good club looking from the outside. Yeah, Russell, another Brighton fan. So many of you getting in touch. Russell, good morning. What do you think about this? Casado stays. What? Good morning, guys. Um, to, to start with, um, we said he's not for sale. Repeatedly said he's not for sale. How come a club like Arsenal can continue to come in, unsettle the player, and this is why he's handed in the transfer request. Two days late before this, he said he was very happy at the club. He gets some new agents. Arsenal repeatedly, they did it with Trossard. They got Trossard on the cheap because they'd unsettled him. Why, why is this still allowed in world football? I thought it was called tapping up. Were you in the receiving end of that, Simon, at Palace when you had a player and one club just wouldn't take no for an answer? Yeah. You want to make David Sulling in Birmingham. Did it regularly. Um, and that's why there's always this rancor between us. Um, but the reality of tapping up is going behind someone's back and doing it. You can't, not, this isn't tapping you up. You can't stop a club from making an offer. No. And what you can do is suggest that Brighton, uh, you know, what everyone should be aggrieved about if you're a Brighton fan in this instance is this player, if this player, if Arsenal want to buy this player and this player wants to go to Arsenal, it is not if, it's when. Right? And the when situation now is that is the unfair part in Brighton because if Arsenal wanted this player and are prepared to pay £70 million for a player, then they should be doing it in the middle of the month. And then everybody can find a solution that makes sense. But the jeopardy of the transfer window puts it into a situation where Arsenal are clearly... I mean, you buy seven, you pay £70 million for something, you'd have looked around, don't you? Why would you buy it a day before the transfer window closes? You'd have thought this is somebody you'd have identified at the beginning of the month, you'd want the player, and maybe the critical mass would find its way to a solution. But the problem for Brighton is, of course, this 30-hour window in terms of the amount of time they've got to be able to resolve it and find another player to fit into the gap that Arsenal yeah. have created. But it's yeah. not pushing back against the top six. Your problem is, is you're pushing back against the player. It's the player you're pushing back against now. Yeah. Are you are you concerned, Russell, that something might change in terms of the club's stance between now and the 11? It's not looking that way. No. But you're still no. concerned? No. I, 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 we, in Tony Bloom, we trust... He, Ever since he took over, we get rid of a player, we get a better player in. We're not worried about that. It's just the fact that they keep coming in, trying to get these players on the cheap using social media. We've asked £100 million for this player. If Arsenal want him, come and pay the £100 million for the player. Stop with this. We're trying to get him on the cheap. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Mudrick for uh, Chelsea was ninety million. The cheap. You got, you got, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, mate. I mean, I know that you're a Brighton fan, and you and I would probably never see things the same way. But you can't, you can't turn around and say you're getting someone on the cheap for seventy million quid when the kids played twenty six games for you, and you bought for four and that, a half. That's madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of messages coming in. Stuart, all endorsing what uh, Tony Bloom is doing at uh, the football club. Uh, there's Jamie, a big Brighton fan. Simon Stewart. Good morning. Uh, we've shown time and time again no player or manager is bigger than the club Bloom is at the heart of Brighton um, he does what's best for the club and what is about his bank balance uh, second I'm not sure if that's the case Simon but certainly he does well, put the club first I mean Tony is a remarkable chairman if you look at Bryson and I used to regularly for you know 
through the back of my hands laughing at the plight they found themselves in with Dean Grange and you now look at Brighton and Tony Bloom is the only reason the stadium the advent and development of that football club from where it was under Dick Knight to where it is now is down to one man Tony Bloom and if you can't see that and support that and you don't in Tony we trust Mm. then I don't know who you would trust in football yeah because he's I mean he has lifted that football club to a level that his money, his influence, his decisions, and he's made good and bad ones along the way. But look at it. They were playing, they had a scout hut for a boardroom. Look at Brighton now. Yeah. And that's yeah. Tony Bloom. I would have a, a slightly different mentality if I, if I was a Brighton fan or anybody working for Brighton on the staff. I would look at it like this. It's a win-win situation for us. I would say if he goes for 70 million, I think that's brilliant money for the kid. If he ends up staying on the other side of it, then you think, brilliant, I've got a good player that probably will keep his value and might go for more in the summer. So I think you've got to look at it from a win-win situation if you're a Brighton, anyone connected with Brighton. Sure, Brighton fans getting in touch. There's another one, Lee. I'm really pleased with our club stance on Casado. We cannot keep losing our best players, but more importantly, we cannot allow players, their agents and rich clubs to come in and think they can throw their money around and get our players. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.